Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us for our worship time this morning. I just want to say a huge thank you uh, for the last couple weeks uh, to our guest worship leaders. We had Gian uh, helping us out one week, and last week my uh, friend Matthew from Seven Oaks uh, helped us out by leading us in worship. And uh, so grateful for them. Allowed me a little bit of a breather time here in this season to catch my breath, take some time off. I uh, used it well, cleaned some of the carpets in my house. Uh, other than that, just kind of hung around and, and did nothing. Y- you know, the usual. Uh, anyways, uh, so glad that you are joining us this morning. Um, f- just want to let you know about a few things that are going to be happening in the near future. We are working on our Christmas care packages as we do every year at this time. We want to remind you that today is the deadline to get the nominations in for those care packages. So if you're looking uh, to fill out one of those forms or you're looking to get a name in, please email contact us uh, today. We need that information. Secondly, we will be delivering these care packages on December the 15th. And we're looking for individuals that would be able to help us with the delivery. Uh, If you would be available on the 15th uh, to help us out, can you please contact the church office? Either um, make a phone call this week uh, or send us an email so that we can organize which care packages are going where and who's going to be delivering what to where. Uh, it'd be a great opportunity for you to, to help us out in, in that regards. Also, we're entering into our Advent season. As you can see from some of the decor here, uh, we are putting together some online portions so that you can participate as a family uh, uh, from your home uh, during this Advent season. So the first thing that you need to be aware of is that Pastor Paula uh, is making available an Advent reading and craft package for families that uh, you can access each and every week. So if you'd like the link for that, please contact the church office. We'd be happy to send that to you. A great way for families to be doing uh, some intentional reflection over what the Advent season looks like. There's some crafts in there, some some fun stuff. Uh, So let us know if we can uh, get that information to you. Secondly, we're going to be lighting our Advent uh, candle, and we're going to be doing that throughout the Advent season, just an opportunity for us to reflect on what the arrival of Jesus means for us. Uh, And if you have uh, some candles kicking around in your house, I'd encourage you to gather them, them up. Even if you've got one candle that you can light each week, we'd like to invite you into the process as we light the candles uh, each and every week and lead you uh, lead us through some time reflecting on scripture and what it means for us uh, we'd like you to participate in that so in a little bit here during our service we're going to uh, have some special guests light the candle but we'll direct you through that time as well uh, in the meantime if you can just grab a candle and have it ready uh, that would be perfect and lastly we just want to say a huge thank Thanks to you, our church family. Uh, This has been obviously a a unique season for so many of us. uh, And yet our church family has continued to be faithful uh, and generous with their giving. And we want to thank you for that. We want to continue to remind you to, to keep on pressing in. What does it mean to be generous in this season? And how do we continue to be faithful with what God has given us? And if you're looking for ways to give, you can visit our website, click on the link that says Donate Now, and there are a number of different ways in which you can uh, be giving online. With that being said, I invite you to pray with me as we open up our service. Jesus, we are so grateful for all that you've done. We're grateful for this Advent season where we can reflect intentionally on what it meant for you to arrive on planet Earth for what that means for our life here today. Jesus, we ask in these moments today that you would be making yourself known, that we would experience you, all your hope, love, joy, and peace. We are so grateful for times where we can worship. We are grateful for our church family. We are grateful for how you have provided for us. 
and we trust that you are up to a great work more than we can even imagine. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, church, I'd like to invite you to worship with me and some of our team. We actually recorded this uh, on site at the church earlier in November uh, and would lo love to lead you in our worship time this morning. Let's sing together. Good morning, SAC. We are so grateful that you're joining us for worship this morning. I invite you to sing along with us. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Feeling every part of our prayer. We're going to sing your presence in this place. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face. We're looking to the sky, descending like a cloud, standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Feeling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, open up the heavens, we want to see you. Today marks the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, this is the beginning of the four-week lead-up until Christmas. Uh, and Advent literally means arrival or coming. And this is a time that's intended to help us focus 
on the arrival of Jesus. This season can be best described with two words. First word being reflection and the second word being anticipation. We take time to pause and to reflect on the historical arrival of Jesus and all that it ushered in while at the same time looking forward with anticipation to all that he will accomplish through his return. And if there was ever a season where we needed to reflect on the arrival of Jesus, this is definitely it. For many of us, 2020 has been a year full, filled with uncertainty and fear, frustration, loneliness, brokenness, and unhealth. But as followers of Jesus, we believe and trust that there's more than darkness and despair. We believe that Jesus came to earth in human form in order to bring light to the darkness and in order to provide us with hope. So during Advent, we will be taking time out of our weekly service or time during each of our weekly services to pause and reflect on the greatest gift that has been given to us. And that gift is Jesus himself. We're going to take time to look at scriptures. We're going to read verses from the New Testament and the Old Testament and consider how Jesus is the fullest embodiment of hope, love, peace, and joy. Our prayer time each and every week at the conclusion of our reflection will reflect our heart's cry to experience the fullness of Jesus in the midst of our broken world. We've asked some of our SAC family to read our passages and our reflection and to offer our prayers each and every week. So each Sunday, we're inviting you to join with them as we light these candles together. We invite you to join with us and listen and reflect and receive the words that are spoken. We invite you to join your hearts and pray with us as we pray. We invite you to find some candles, five to be exact, but if you only have one, just use one. You can be as creative as you'd like to be, but it doesn't need to be anything fancy. Set them aside on a dinner table or in a prominent location in your home, somewhere where you can see it on a daily basis. Then as we light the candle during our Sunday service, we will invite you to light your candle whether it's an open flame or just turning on the battery on a battery-operated candle, we invite you to enter in with us. Each week, we will allow these moments to point us towards the hope that we have in Jesus, the peace that he makes available to us, the true joy that he provides, and the love that he pours out so freely on us. The center candle is the Christ candle, and while that is normally lit here during our candlelight Christmas Eve service, uh, unfortunately this year we will not be meeting on site. But we're going to have some more directions for you in the weeks to come how you can gather in your home to light that candle together to reflect on Jesus. We'll be sending out some emails during this season with scripture, readings, and, and prayer. There are... Uh, resources for you to use as a family to intentionally reflect. And my encouragement to you is this, to look for some of the new ways to reflect on what it means for Jesus to arrive. In the midst of everything that is going on, what does it mean for you to experience the arrival of Jesus in this season? Our prayer is that as we light the candle each week during this season of Advent, that you will be drawn in by the reminder that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Hi, SAC. We are the Tangements, and we will be leading everyone through the lighting of our first Advent candle today. So please listen to these words from Scripture. Romans 5, 1-5 Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. We boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, 
but we also glory in our suffering, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not be faint. We have hope in the glory of God. Our hope is the assurance that God will finish all he has started. Our hope is the confidence that he will fulfill all his promises. Our hope is in the person and life of Jesus. In this season, we can have hope. This candle reminds us of the hope that we have in and through Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for becoming our hope. Keep us from despair as we put our trust in you. In a world full of darkness, despair, and brokenness, help us to be a people shining the light of hope for all to see. Amen. Oh, my. 
there will be no end. He'll establish it with His righteousness. And He shall reign on David's throne. And His name shall be from this day on. Wonderful Counselor. Everlasting Father. Hope you're well. Today we are actually concluding our journey through the Lord's Prayer. I don't know about you, but I have learned a lot. I have felt this study to be really, really rich, and I trust that you have too. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of recap where we've been, and then we're going to end with that incredible doxology. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to remind you how this series started. It all started with how we're actually not to pray. Do you remember what Jesus said right before the Lord's Prayer? He said this, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is how we started this series. I, I want to remind you that prayer is not about putting on a show to impress others. And prayer doesn't have to be long. Because I don't know, sometimes you go to the church-wide prayer meeting and people can wax eloquent and they seem to pray so, so long. Um, I just want to remind you that prayer doesn't have to be long. It, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. And so don't think that a long prayer is a good prayer and that a short prayer is an immature prayer. Not so. Jesus is also saying don't try to impress others when you pray and don't think that you've got to keep babbling on for God to hear you. It's not about that. He then says, this is how you are to pray. Because remember, the disciples come to Jesus, and of all things, they say, Jesus, would you teach us how to pray? This is fascinating. Because they could have asked Jesus to teach them anything, really. You know, Jesus teaches to do miracles. 
Jesus, teach us to, teach us to heal. We want to know how to heal. Jesus, teach us to be able to deliver people from the kingdom of darkness. Or Jesus, would you teach us how to preach? You could have asked him anything, but no, no. It was Jesus. Teach us to pray. We, we want to be able to pray like you. And, and Jesus says, okay. He says, here's how I want you to begin And this was really shocking at the time. He says, okay, begin this way. Our Father in heaven. We get to approach God. We get to engage with God, not as the Holy One, even though He is. Not as the Sovereign One, even though He is. Not as the all-powerful one, even though he is. He is all these things and so much more. But no, we get to come to God and we get to approach God as Father. As Daddy. Papa. It's about an intimate relationship that we get to have with God as sons and daughters who have actually been adopted into his family. And I think most of us, we, we take this for granted. You know, Father God just seems to flippantly roll off of our tongues. It's, it's what we say. It's how we pray. It's, it's, you know, just what we do as Christians. Father God, Father God. And I just want to remind you how remarkable this is. I want to remind you that in the Old Testament, God was only addressed as Father around seven times. You would never address God this way. This is why when Jesus came on the scene and He started calling God Father, people freaked out. This was unheard of. This was a a departure from orthodoxy. How dare he address God in such an informal way? Who does he think he is to be able to talk to God like this? And yet in the Gospels, what we see and what we read over and over and over again is Jesus constantly addressing God as Father more than 70 times times and this was a real shocker and in these moments Jesus was changing the paradigm of how we should relate with God our father regardless of what comes to your mind when you hear that word whether it's good or bad God is the perfect father he will never damage your heart. And He so loves you even though He knows everything about you. There's nothing that you can do to make God love you more. There's nothing that you can do to make God love you less. This is the whole point of the parable of the prodigal son. You can break the Father's heart but you cannot break His love. Because his love for us, hear this, is not based on our behavior. It's based on his character. Our Father, who art in heaven. Now, this doesn't mean that God is way out there or or way up there. You know, God, can you hear me? Where are you? No, to the first century Jewish person, in heaven literally means in the heavens, or better yet, all around us. And so Jesus is saying, pray to your Father in heaven who's all around you, who's very close at hand. Hallowed be thy name. This is not a word that we use very often. But hallowed means holy. It means to set apart as holy, to treat as holy to consider holy and what we know from the scriptures is that god is holy we we know from the scriptures that when people encountered god it was the holiness of god that completely overwhelmed them think of moses think of isaiah the holiness of god seems to be that one attribute that supersedes all other attributes and that's why when Isaiah encounters God, 
The angels don't cry out, God is love, love, love. You know, that's true. They don't say God is powerful, 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 even though that's true. They don't say God is good, 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 because that's also true. But they don't say that. With two of their wings, they they cover their faces and they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. It was the holiness of God that consumed them. So, to pray, hallowed be your name, is to treat God with awe and reverence. To hallow his name is to not take his name in vain. To hallow his name is to worship God with our prayers and our praise. It's to have a posture of continually praising God for the God, for the holy God that he is. To hallow his name is since God is holy, we should also live holy lives as God's people. We, we should want his, his name to be hallowed in us as a testimony to others. Your kingdom come. The kingdom is the rule and reign of God in the world, but also in a person's life. It's a spiritual and invisible kingdom. And the only way to enter this kingdom is through repentance. It's to say, it's to come to the point in your life, God, I've been living my life apart from you. Going down my own path. God, I want to change my mind. I want to make a U-turn and start following you. Quite some time ago, I I saw a painting of Jesus. Perhaps you've seen it. I've never forgotten it. But it's it's a painting of Jesus standing in front of, of a big wooden door. And he's knocking on the door. Now, when you take a closer look at the painting, you'll notice that on the outside of the door, there's no doorknob. The doorknob is on the inside of the door. In other words, Jesus is knocking on the door of your life. But we've got to repent and and, and open the door and invite him to come in. Because Jesus is a gentleman. He's not going to come and boot down the door of your life. You've got to open it. You've got to repent and invite him in. And when you do, that's how you come and enter the kingdom. Have you done that? Are you part of his kingdom? And the amazing thing, I want you to hear this. The amazing thing is that as followers of Jesus, God actually invites us to participate in the building of his kingdom. And we do this by telling others, by sharing our faith. And we look forward to the day when Jesus will physically and visibly come to set up his kingdom. The first time he came as a suffering servant, he came as a lamb to give up his life. Oh, but with his second coming, he's not going to be doing that this time. He's going to come as a lion where he will come and rule in power and every knee will bow. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that Jesus came to do the will of the Father. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. And of course, we know that the climax of Jesus doing the will of God is is in the garden at the crushing place. Jesus said, Father, if it is possible... Take this cup from me. And yet not what I will, but your will be done. This theme of doing the Father's will was at the very core of Jesus' life. And so in this way, Jesus essentially brought heaven down to earth. Now, question. What is God's will? What does God want? What does God desire? 
commentators have pointed out that, that what comes before this helps us to understand God's will. In other words, at a macro world level, it is God's will that people will hallow his name. It is God's will that people will repent and enter his kingdom. It is God's will that once in the kingdom, people will continue to submit to his rule and to his reign in their lives. This is what God longs to see happen on earth. And this is what we should pray for. Now on a personal micro level we acknowledge that God knows what is best for our lives that he is a good God and so we surrender our wills to him we pray God not my will but your will be done give us this day our daily bread here Jesus is teaching us to bring our needs and our request to God with the reminder that God is our provider, which is really the antidote to fear. Because many of us are afraid, will, will I have enough? I, I'm managing now, but what about tomorrow? What about next week? Um, what if I lose my job? What if something happens and I can't work? What if, what if, what if? It's all focused on tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Give us this day our what? Our daily bread. Jesus is reminding us to live in his kingdom as a kingdom people one day at a time. Do you remember what he said just, just after this? I mean, Jesus tells us how to pray. He gets in the Lord's Prayer, and then he gets into this big section on worry. Do you remember what he says? Well, here it is. And let this land in your heart. Do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. To pray this way is to be released from the fear of tomorrow. Tomorrow has not yet come. It is to trust that God will provide what we need for, for today. Now, we also talked about bread in the spiritual sense, how we need regular sustenance that comes from the feasting on God's word and from the feasting on Jesus, who is the bread of life. And then we end it with a bit of an uncomfortable challenge, perhaps. Because it doesn't say... Give me this day my daily bread. I think we often read it that way. But no, there's, there, there's no me and there's no my. It, it's us and our. In other words, this calls us. Get ready. This calls us to a, a lifestyle of solidarity with the whole family of God. And so the question, or maybe questions are, how are you being kingdom conscious? How are you being generous with what God has given you? And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Just as we need daily bread from God, so do we need forgiveness from God on a daily basis. The amazing thing, the, the gospel, uh, do you want to hear some good news? And Not much good news in the world these days, but here's the ultimate good news, the gospel. Jesus came and paid a sin debt that he did not owe because we owed a debt that we could not pay. And so to enter the kingdom, we, we acknowledge that we are sinners and we ask God to forgive us. We bring nothing to the table but repentance and faith. And once in the kingdom, we daily ask God to forgive us. Forgiveness is not just that salvation. It is not one and done at salvation, but forgiveness is, is a posture. It, it calls us to a lifestyle of confession. And 
since we have been so graciously and lavishly and extravagantly forgiven by God of all of our sin, we should be forgiving of others. Forgiven and forgiving. And this is not to say that forgiveness is easy. And we know that it's not. And, and hear this. This is not to say that forgiveness means trust. It doesn't. It's just to say that one of the marks of someone who has truly had their life touched by Christ one, one of, their, of the marks of someone who has truly had their heart transformed is that they will actually enter into the difficult journey of forgiveness. I have never met with a Christian who has said, you know what? I know that God has forgiven me of all of my sin. I know that God has been so gracious to me. But you know what? I don't care. That person hurt me and I will not forgive them. I've never experienced that. I, in turn, have met with people who want to forgive, who are trying to forgive, who are working through forgiving uh, a person. And again, This is hard. And to really begin this journey, I want to say it again. I want to encourage you again to really enter into this journey of forgiveness. We've got to acknowledge the hurt and the hate. So who's hurt you? Who do you hate? Would you be willing to acknowledge this to God? Because again, if you're just going to sweep it under the rug and I could never acknowledge that, then you're going to stay stuck. Because God cannot begin a healing work in you if you don't acknowledge it. And so, take this journey of forgiveness. Admit the hurt. Admit the hate. And find true freedom. Give this gift to yourself. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. God is never the source of temptation. But... He will allow us to go through deep times of testing for the purpose, for the purpose, for the purpose of making us more like Jesus. That's that's the goal of the Christian life. That's the end game. It's not our comfort. It's all about our character, character, character. The enemy, though, wants to turn these tests into temptations. And he does this by sowing seeds of suspicion that are directly assaulted at the nature of God's goodness. And he does this by, he wants us to to take matters into our own hands, to get out from under the trial, to to escape, to, to medicate in ways that are destructive apart from Jesus. And this is how he turns tests in a temptation and so i believe jesus is saying father as you lead us into various tests for our good don't let the test become a temptation but deliver us from the evil one and then we ended with with what it means to be filled with the spirit because We can't do this in our own strength. We need help. We need the power of the Spirit to regularly fill us so that we can actually live for Jesus and be able to have the the power to to say no to sin and temptation and, and the evil one himself. And how do you get filled? Well, empty yourself and ask for the filling and do it and do it daily. This is where we've been been quite the journey and now i'm going to finish this off briefly for thine is the kingdom the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Some of the ancient early manuscripts do not include this doxology at the end. And so some scholars do believe that this was not actually part of the original Lord's Prayer. They believe it was added sometime after because it was very customary for Jews to end their prayers with with a type of doxology. So either way, um, let's, let's look at it. I love how it returns the focus back to God. If not, it ends with, but deliver us from the evil one. And we don't want to end with him. We don't want to end with him at all. We we don't want the focus to be on him. We want to end with God. As we've already discovered, the Lord's prayer begins with a strong, intentional focus on God. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Only after we have praised Him and have been reminded of His priorities do we then shift the focus to us and to our needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts and so on. But now the focus at the end returns back to God. How refreshing because it takes our eyes off of ourselves and and back onto him for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen first the kingdom god is king he is building his kingdom to which there will be no end Every other world power, every other prior kingdom in past history has either collapsed or has been defeated. It is, it is no more. Little tangent here. Have you ever wondered why the United States of America is not mentioned in biblical prophecy? Could it be? Could it be that the United States is no longer the world power, the predominant kingdom that it once was. We'll have to see. Only God knows, but I think so. What we know about God's kingdom is that He is the King. He will never be overthrown or defeated. And yes... Right now, according to the Scriptures, there is another kingdom. It's the kingdom of darkness. One kingdom is is eternal. One kingdom, it's temporary. And the glorious day is coming. When the devil, the, the tempter, that snake in the grass, him and his entire kingdom of darkness. That glorious day is coming when they will all be thrown into the pit and defeated. To which we say, we have to say, come Jesus and do it. And maybe even do it today. Only God's kingdom will last forever Are you part of the kingdom? And if you are, if you've entered the kingdom, are you continually surrendering and asking Jesus to be the king of your life? Because listen, He doesn't want to just be accepted into your life. He wants to take over. The power. This reminds us All power belongs to God. He and only He is the all-powerful One. He has no rival. His power is seen all throughout the Scriptures. His power is seen as the One who, who made the world out of nothing. His power is seen as the One who rescues Israel from Egyptian bondage. His power is seen as the one who raises Jesus from the dead. And get ready for this. His power 
is available to each and every one of us through His Spirit to provide us what we need to be able to resist temptation and to overcome the evil one. And might I add, because God is all-powerful, when it comes to your life, and the circumstances of your life, God is able to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. Amen? The glory. This means that we acknowledge God's greatness, that we praise and worship Him and only Him, simply because He is God. He and He alone deserves to be praised and worshipped. As it says in Philippians 4.20, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, the origin of sin is pride. Pride essentially says, I want the glory. I want the glory. It's mine. It's not God's. J.I. Packer says it this way. The test. So you're being given a test right now. Listen. The test is to ask yourself how pleased or how displeased you become if God is praised while you are not. And equally, if you are praised while God is not. The mature Christian is content not to have glory given to them, but it actually troubles them if people are not glorifying God. Did you pass the test? In the words of John the Baptist, I must decrease, he must increase. It's about giving God the glory. Forever. And ever, these past few weeks, we have seen a reign coming to an end. You could say that in the United States, a kingdom is coming to an end in a few months. Question, how long is God's kingdom? How long will His reign last for? What is the duration of His kingdom? Well, we're told forever and ever and ever. It's His kingdom, His power, His glory forever and ever. It will never come to an end. Again, are you part of this kingdom? Amen simply means truly, so be it. Would you pray with me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Heavenly Father, you always amaze me. Let your kingdom come in my world my life you give me the food I need to live through today and forgive me as I forgive the people that are wrong lead me far from temptation Deliver me from the evil one. I look out the window, the birds are composing. Not a note 
days out of tears or out of place I walk to the meadow and stare at the flowers better dress than any girl on a wedding day so why should I Worry. Why do I freak out? God knows what I need. You know what I need. Your love is, your love is, your love is strong. Your love is, your Church, as you go, I just want to simply encourage you with a few things. Yes, we're back in lockdown mode. And yes, this is hard for many of us. I think it's hard for all of us. And yet, I just want to remind you that God is on his throne in heaven. God is in control. He's your father. He's with you. He's watching over your life. I want to speak these words over you because as I talk with many people, many people are so afraid. God does not want us to live in fear. We can rise above that. 
And we do that by being reminded of his word. And so this has been an anchor for me. And I want to speak these words over you that are from Jesus. So, so listen carefully. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Jesus' words to you. Receive them and go in peace this day. God bless you.